Thomas Ferguson was a member of the Mormon Church and an amateur archaeologist who dedicated years to trying to find the archaeological evidence for the Book of Mormon. He began his travels in 1946 to Central America, where he theorized the Book of Mormon had taken place. Ferguson founded the New World Archaeological Foundation in 1952, which eventually received funding from the Church. The organization was also later absorbed into the Church, with Mormon Apostle Howard W. Hunter as the head. Ferguson studied ancient American archaeological sites for the next 20 years. Then in 1967, the original Egyptian papyri that Joseph Smith had used to translate the Book of Abraham had been found. Ferguson studied the papyri and found it to be no more than standard funerary text from the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and that Joseph Smith's translation was incorrect. A few years later in 1970, he came to the conclusion that the Book of Mormon is not a historical book and firmly believed no archaeological evidence would be found. In a personal letter, he explained how he managed his new life in the church, knowing that it was not true, and gave advice to try his method. He said, Mormonism is probably the best conceived myth, fraternity, to which one can belong. Joseph Smith tried so hard, he put himself out on a limb with the Book of Abraham, and also with the Book of Mormon. He can be refuted, but why bother? It would be like wiping out placebos in medicine, and that would make no sense when they do lots of good. Why not say the right things and keep your membership in the great fraternity, enjoying the good things you like, and discarding the ones you can't swallow, and keeping your mouth shut? Hypocritical. Maybe. Thousands of members have done and are doing what I suggest you consider doing. Silence is golden, etc. So why try to be heroic and fight the myths, the Mormon one, or any other that does more good than ill? Perhaps you and I have been spoofed by Joseph Smith. Now that we have the inside dope, why not spoof a little back and stay aboard? Please consider this letter confidential, for obvious reasons. I want to stay aboard the good ship, Mormonism, for various reasons that I think valid. Several of my dearly loved family members want desperately to believe, and do believe it. And they each need it. It does them far more good than harm. Belonging with my eyes wide open is actually fun, less expensive than formerly, and no strain at all. I am now very selective in the meetings I attend, the functions I attend, the amounts I contribute, etc., etc., and I have a perfectly happy time. I never get up and bear testimony, but I don't mind listening to others who do. I am much more tolerant of other religions and other thinking, and feel fine about things in general. You might give my suggestions a trial run, and if you find you have to burn all the bridges between yourselves and the church, then go ahead and ask for excommunication. The day will probably come, but it is far off, when the leadership of the church will change the excommunication rules and delete as grounds non-belief in the two books mentioned, and in Joseph Smith as a prophet, etc. But if you wait for that day, you probably will have died. It is a long way off. Tithing would drop too much for one thing.